Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I have taken up the Never Reload Weapon Challenge. Uh, recently, I've been trying to make Battlefield 4 a little bit more interesting. It's the reason why I take up all of your terrible weapon setups, and I thought that this could be a fun substitute for that to switch things up a bit. And so, if you've never heard of this challenge, it's very self-explanatory, and the way it works is that I can never reload my weapons, and so if I run out of all of my rounds in my magazine, in my primary, I either have to pick up another weapon on the ground or switch on over to my secondary finish off an enemy or just find a random weapon on the ground pick it up and then continue on with my kill streak and because of those restrictions it opens up so many different possibilities to take out my targets because normally when you get into a firefight with someone a 1v1 engagement you don't worry too much about how many rounds you go with go through because as long as you take out the target and as long as you did it within usually the 30 rounds for an assault rifle it doesn't really matter. You normally don't have to go back to back to back consecutive kills. I mean, sometimes that happens, but for the most part, it's just one-on-one -on -one engagement you're gonna reload after it. But for this, I had to be very methodical and conservative with all of my rounds because if I got into an engagement with someone and they were 50 meters out, well, I could run on over and pick up their primary weapon, but that would leave me very, very exposed. And so when I got into these engagements, I thought to myself, all right, I need to be very, very accurate. I need to turn myself into a marksman so that if I do take out the target, which I'm going to, I'm, I'm being positive, I need to have enough rounds left in my magazine so that when I get into a confrontation with someone who is a little bit closer, I can kill them and then pick up their weapon. Uh, the other way I approached it was to flank my enemy as often as I could to completely catch them by surprise. When you get into a firefight with someone, even if you win that engagement, it's a two-way street. You're firing bullets, they're firing bullets, and so when I would run up to pick up their primary after those engagements, it usually didn't have a whole lot of bullets left in the mag, and that left me floundering and I would probably have to switch on over to my secondary to be effective. And because of that, if I was able to flank my enemy and catch them by surprise so that they did, just did not fire a single shot at me, or they were only able to get a couple of rounds down range, I was going to take the time to go pick up their primary because I knew it was going to be full of that sweet, sweet ammo. And it was because of that dynamic and everything that I just talked about where we start to get to the nitty gritty of this challenge because every single time I picked up someone else's weapon, I had to identify what it was. Is this a high rate of fire weapon? Am I using a FAMAS? Am I using a designated marksman rifle? And then once I identified what I was using, I had to adapt to this situation. So if I was using an AEK, let's play up close and personal. And then the next target that I took out, well, we are all, we're all up close, we're, we're right near the objective, but I just picked up an SKS, a designated marksman rifle. Let's hold back a little bit, let's play a little bit more defensively and try to take people out at a distance. And it was it was that thought process that honestly made this so much fun. I was having an absolute blast. It was extremely refreshing because normally you don't have to think about that because you're using your primary, you're switching over to your secondary, you know how they perform, you're using a high rate of fire weapon, you know you're supposed to play up close and personal, and that's how you will play the map the entire round. But when you're constantly switching between all of these crazy setups, and there were some crazy setups, that was probably another fun aspect of it, is because you would just find these ridiculous loadouts, people using the Iron V scope, people using the RPK light machine gun, who uses that gun? No one uses that weapon. Picking them up and then adapting to how you're supposed to play. It honestly was an absolute blast. Uh, one thing that I did have to work around though and was a little frustrating was that there were some moments when I would take out a couple of targets and then I would go to pick up their weapon and I couldn't find them. I would, I, I would run around floundering, I would look all over the place, but they wouldn't be there. And I couldn't tell if it was just because the weapons themselves disappear very quickly. I couldn't tell if they just flung them across the map. There are sometimes, it's, it's always amusing when this happens, is when you take out some targets, especially if they're going down a hill or something, they throw their weapon and they like, they extend it, it flies out. It's amusing, but trying to find it and, and pick it up, especially when there's all these enemies around you and you're freaking out, makes it a little bit challenging. And so I don't know if DICE changed some things from, an o from Battlefield 3 on over into Battlefield 4, but I did have some difficulties just finding where the weapons were. They do blink, so that is one nice feature of it. So if, if you see a weapon on the ground, they have this, this blink-in feature. But like I said, there just was a lot of moments where I would try to find the weapon. I would be left floundering because I couldn't find it and then proceed to die. So that was one frustrating aspect of this challenge. Uh, another thing I noticed right off the bat was that if I wanted to be successful with this, and if you want to give this a try, 
is avoid very high player count domination and team deathmatch. I realize domination and team deathmatch and those high 64 man servers can be very appealing because there's a, a ridiculous amount of action. You would assume that there is a lot of targets for you to shoot at, but you also have to remember there's a lot of people to shoot at you. And so even if you're able to kill maybe one or two people, eventually you're gonna have to go out in the open to pick up their weapon. And once you do that, the entire team is going to murder you. And so I would highly recommend sticking with 16 man TDMs, maybe 32 man is about the, the highest I would go for domination team deathmatch. You can do this on Conquest or, or I wouldn't actually recommend this on Rush. Rush would be pretty hardcore. If you're able to do that successfully on Rush, hat off to you because that would be incredible. But if you wanna play on team deathmatch and domination, I would stick with the lower player count servers. Uh, but overall, if you can't tell, I have had an absolute blast with this. It was extremely refreshing, and if you are looking for something to switch up Battlefield a little bit, you want to try something new, I highly recommend you give this a try. It will take some getting used to, and one of the things that you will have to overcome is the instinct to reload after every kill. I had a problem with this where I would I would constantly reload after every single engagement. It's just ingrained in my system. And so if you were someone like that, I know this will be one thing that you do have to overcome. But once you get the hang of it, once you start to get in the groove, it's it's just so much fun. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. And so until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.